We are Caden Katrina, and we converted this old GMC van into a comfortable, livable camper van complete with a fully fledged electrical system, including solar panels, a lithium battery, a refrigerator, and an inverter. You may have seen our previous electrical video where we showed you how to plan out your electrical system for your van. We used the system that we showed you in that video for a little while until our needs just outgrew it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you our brand new electrical system that we've been using for about a month since we've been living in the van. Let's start in the back. Welcome to under my bed. <laughs> so this is where our electrical system lives and we tried to keep it as space efficient as possible so that it didn't take up too much space back here because our van is pretty small and we don't have a lot of storage space and we keep a lot of stuff back here under the bed. Um, so we try not to take up too much space, but here, da -da -da -da. All right, so at the heart of every electrical system is the battery. So as you can see, we went with a uh, Battleborn 100 amp hour lithium battery. A little more expensive than an AGM battery, a lot more expensive, but if you can afford it, it is so worth it to get lithium, especially if you're trying to keep it as compact as possible. With lithium, you can use almost all of the battery's capacity without hurting the battery at all. And with AGM batteries, you can only use about 50%. So to get 100 amp hours with AGM, you would have to have 200 amp hours, which would be double the space as this. So it just made sense for us. And when I learned that, it pretty much sold me right away on lithium that it can take up half the space of AGM. And it's also a lot lighter, which is important too. We have been loving this battery so far. So if you can, you should definitely get one of these or two or three or four, but we only have room for one. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to kind of walk you through quickly how this is set up. Um, these down here are called bus bars, and this is positive, this is negative, and it's really just an extension of the posts on the battery just to make it a little bit more organized. You can kind of think of it as three different things. We have our charging, we have our DC system, and then we have our AC system. Now, I'm not an electrician, so I'm not going to tell you about like wire sizes or fuse sizes or stuff. It's really complicated and I can link some resources in the description that I use to help figure this out. But like I said, I'm not an expert in this. So this is just what I did in my van. Okay, we're gonna start with charging. So this is our charger. This is what keeps our battery charged. It is the Renogy 50 amp DC to DC MPPT charger. So that's a lot of letters and words and stuff. Basically what this does is it can take both solar charge and alternator charge from the front in the van and let that charge our battery. So it's kind of like a two in one. And this is super helpful for us because we don't have a lot of space and we wanted to keep it small. And so this has been awesome. There are a couple trade-offs with it, which if you have space, I would probably recommend getting separate components because this limits you to uh, 25 amps on either side, so alternator or solar. It also limits your solar voltage to like 20 or 25 or something, which means you have to run it in parallel, which I'll show you that later. But the plus side for us is it is small and it keeps our batteries charged, so that's all we need. So from this box, we have wires running all the way to the front of the van to the front starter battery, which is connected to the alternator. When the van is running, charge will be sent from the front to this little box and then into our battery. So that's actually the main way that we keep our battery charged. And then we also have solar that helps it keep topped up when we're stopped. Now, since we get 25 amps coming in from the alternator, this is a 100 amp hour battery. So four hours and this thing will be completely charged, which is really awesome for us. Yeah. So on the roof, we have two 100 watt flexible solar panels from Renogy. And these are wired in parallel because what I said about the charger before, the wires just run into this housing that go down into our big cabinet inside the van. 
We went with flexible because we have this uh, fiberglass top on our van and it's very curvy and not very <laughs> structural. So instead of the rigid panels, we went with these and it was pretty simple to install them. We just glued them down to the roof and they have stayed for, we've been about 3000 miles or so and they are holding up great. And while it's not a ton of solar, it does help to keep the battery charged while we're just sitting in somewhere sunny like this. Okay, let's go back down here. So that covers the input, uh, the charging portion of our electrical system. And now I'm gonna go over the output. So the DC 12 volt and the inverter, the AC. So our DC system is everything in our van that is 12 volt that goes directly to the battery through that DC fuse block back there. So starting with our roof fan, we have this uh, Max Air fan. Uh, I'm not sure the model or anything. It's got 10 speeds in or out and it is awesome. And it is just run through our big cabinet here and back to the back of the van. We did the electrical pretty much last and in our build, we never took out the ceiling or the walls. These are all original. And so the only exposed wiring that you can see is this right here. And we did mean to cover it with something, but we just never got around to it. And don't even really notice it anymore. So that's the fan. So next up, we also have this 12 volt fridge. It's actually running right now. Uh, you probably can't even hear it because it's super quiet. This is the uh, 50 liter or 50 quart ice co fridge and it is super awesome. Highly recommend. It's like half the price of a Dometic. So definitely get one of these. It hardly ever runs. And when it does, it's only pulling like 35 Watts or so. So it's super nice, super efficient. You can run it off DC or AC and we're running it off DC and it's actually hardwired to our system. Those little 12 volt plugs that they come with, I just chopped that off and wired it right to the fuse block and it works great. So definitely recommend doing that if you have one of these. So next up is our USB outlets and they're kind of hidden so I can't really show you, but they are back in this hole back here and there are four just regular USB outlets. And we use these to charge our phones, our watches. We run this little USB fan off of it, which is really awesome. And yeah, so those are just wired right to the fuse block back there as well. Super awesome. Okay, and last but not least, we have our custom built dog house that we made for Clyde. Super awesome thing. And you're thinking, does it need power? Yes, it does actually. It has two regular computer fans, PC fans back here and they're exhaust fans. So they help pull air through the box to keep Clyde cool. And they're just wired straight to that fuse block in the back as well, just like every other DC thing in here. And they're actually connected to a potentiometer in the back that can control the speed with the voltage. And if you wanna check out how we built this, you can watch that video over here. So that's it for the DC portion of our electrical system. And the last thing I need to show you is our inverter. So this is how we get AC power. Um, this is the Samlex 1000 watt inverter. A little bit bigger than we need right now, but there's always room for expansion, right? So good to have bigger than you need, but not too much bigger. We decided to go with a really nice quality, well-built inverter, um, pure sine wave, actually pure sine wave. Yeah, really well made, kind of expensive, but worth it to get good components like this, just like the battery. So as you can see, our inverter is in the back with everything else, um, and that's where the plugs are. But this is actually a little extension cord, and let me show you where that goes. So this might be my favorite part of our electrical system. This is the other end of that extension cord that I showed you. And it is just run up to this counter and then through the wall to this little plate that I have here. And it's super awesome. It gives us like real electrical outlets in the wall. And this right here is a switch to turn the inverter on and off. So super awesome, another extra cost, but super worth it. We don't have to go to the back to turn the inverter on every time we wanna use it. We just hit that button and then we can use these outlets whenever we want. This might be a little bit hard to see, but this is our fuse panel for our DC devices. So this one has six circuits. We're only using four of them. 
I should have them marked, but I think I know which ones are which. This is the fridge. Uh, this is the fan. This is the doghouse. And I think, yeah, this one would be the USB outlets. And so we got the one with the negative bus as well, which I would definitely recommend. Makes it super easy because you can just run this, whatever this uh, double duplex wire is called. Um, has a positive and negative with it. You just run one wire to each component and wire it to the fuse and some insert some sort of saying right here. Boom. And Bob's your uncle. I hate that expression. So I was about to end the video, but I did think of one more thing. The lights in our van, yes, we do have lights. And yes, they do work and they're awesome vintage camper lights. But like I said, we didn't redo the walls. So these actually came with the van originally. So they're wired to the front starter battery. It was too much of a pain to rewire them to our house battery. So we just left it that way and we have had no problems with it so far. We can run them pretty much as long as we want, as long as we start the van every few days to uh, recharge the starter battery. All right, well, that's pretty much all I can think of for our electrical system. Kind of a short, quick video. Didn't go too big into the specifics of things, but I'm not an electrician. All I know is this works and it's a great little setup. And I hope this video kind of helped you visualize what a little system could look like. And if you have any questions, definitely just drop a comment and I'll try to help out as much as I can. But that's it for this one and I'll catch you next week.